At this point, I don't even need to use my mouse. I actually don't even need to see what's going on on the right side of my screen. I can just keep my eyes on the image because I don't have to move the slider with my mouse. For whatever reason in Premiere, there is no shortcut for adding adjustment layer, so you always have to do it through the menu. So I programmed mine so that I can add it by double clicking the top button. And this can not only potentially save so much time, but also using this knob instead of the mouse and keyboard is so much fun and more accurate. You know, I like taking pictures and I like making videos for my YouTube channel, but editing them is probably my least favorite part of the whole process and also the most time consuming. So I'm always looking for ways to improve and streamline my workflow. A little while ago, I learned about this odd looking little device called Torbox. It's basically a control pad with some buttons and dials which you can program individually for your needs for software such as Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, and many more. And I've tried some of these so-called macro pads in the past, but unfortunately, I haven't quite found one that I really liked because a lot of them come with really terrible softwares that are either really difficult to use or doesn't really work properly at all. And they're either too small and don't have enough buttons, so you just end up doing most of the work on your keyboard anyway, or they're too big and too complex and too difficult to use and or they just take up too much space on your desk. So while I was a bit skeptical but curious, Torbox reached out to me and asked me if I would like to try one out and review it. And as some of you may know, this thing isn't new. It's been out for a while, but they've been constantly updating their drivers and they just added a new feature in their latest firmware called Wonderflow. So I'm gonna tell you more about that later in this video. And as a consumer, that's always a good sign and that's very assuring when companies always listening to their customers and always working hard to improve their user experience instead of just always coming out with new hardwares to sell every year making your older devices obsolete and ever since the time i received this from them about two months ago they released eight more updates which is pretty amazing considering that this isn't even a brand new product so today I'm going to tell you a little bit about its hardware and it's some of the new software features and how this has changed my workflow overall in the past few months and uh, what I think about it overall. So let's jump right in. In terms of hardware, for those of you who don't know, they have two versions, the Toolbox Neo and the Elite. The Neo is the older and cheaper model and the Elite looks the same as the Neo, but it comes with Bluetooth 5.0, adjustable haptic feedback, and they also upgraded the internals so it's a little bit more responsive. The Elite also comes in three fingerprint proof finishes in black, white, or translucent like the one I have here, which looks very cool. And while the Neo only comes in black. The hardware feels very solid and well-made and all the buttons and dials feel nice. And it's actually a lot heavier than I expected it to be. And um, because of the grippy bottom and the weight of it, it doesn't slide around when it's sitting on your desk, which is a good thing. When I first saw this, I wondered why this was designed this way with so many different types and shapes of buttons and dials. And But I definitely understand why now. Because all the buttons are so differently designed, it's very easy to use this thing without taking your eyes off the screen. You know, I've been using Photoshop for nearly two decades or so, and I know pretty much all the keyboard shortcuts that exist. But even now, I often have to look down on my keyboard to see if I'm pressing the right buttons. But with this, in just a few minutes of use, I knew exactly where all the buttons and dials were. I never had to look at it again to make sure I'm pressing the right buttons. And the battery life seems pretty good as well. It uses two AA batteries and I heard it can last anywhere between one to two months, I guess depending on the usage and the quality of the batteries. I've been using this with the batteries that it came with and it's still going. Now let's talk about the software. And to me, apart from the hardware, this is what really sets the tour box apart from any other macro pads that I've tried before. It feels very refined, looks good and very easy to use. So the way you set it up is you can first select and enable the presets for the softwares that you use and you can either use one of the default presets that it came with or you can download other user created presets and you can either just use them as they are or customize them to your liking or you can just create your own from scratch. 
Once those are in your panel, you can enable auto switch and it automatically switches between them. You don't have to manually do that. And then all you have to do is you can just go through the functions of the buttons and dials and program them to the keys or shortcuts that you use the most. There are a total of 11 buttons and three dials on the tour box, but because the dials themselves can act as buttons, there are technically 14 buttons and three dials, but you can also program two button combinations and also double clicks, which increases the number of possible inputs tremendously. If you look at the D-pad down here, you can obviously program it with four different commands, but you can program it so that while holding down the side button or the top button, you can get a set of different commands. So you can basically get up to 12 commands just with the D-pad. Also, you can program your own macro commands as well. For example, for whatever reason in Premiere, there is no shortcut for adding adjustment layer. So you always have to do it through the menu. So I programmed mine so that I can add it by double clicking the top button. To add a color mat, I double click the short button on the right. And the dials are obviously very useful for movements that are difficult with just the keyboard and mouse. I mean, your mouse has a scroll wheel, but that's just one and it already has a job of scrolling. So having three more inputs of linear controls can really open up a lot of possibilities. When you edit photos, instead of having to drag the marker left and right with your mouse, you can just assign one of the dials for that, which makes a lot more sense and feels much more natural. Also, you can use them to zoom in and out or change your brush size instead of having to spam plus and minus keys on your keyboard. In Premiere, I use the knob in the middle to scrub the timeline, the scroll wheel to stretch and squeeze it, and the bottom dial to zoom in and out of the audio waves. Now let's talk about the new feature, Wonderflow. What is it and how does it work? Well, this is really cool. So when you're editing your photos in either Lightroom or Camera Raw or Capture One, etc., you get all these modules and sliders and you have to individually find them and select them with your mouse to work with them. But in most cases, I don't need all these options and even when you do, it gets pretty annoying having to scroll up and down to find the ones you need. That's where this comes in. In the tour box console, you can set up what's called the tour menu. And what this is, is basically a collection of your consolidated menus of all of your most used functions. You can either keep it pretty much the same as how you see them in your editing softwares or reorganize them and make them as simple or as complex as you like. And you can assign them to some of the buttons to bring them up. In my Lightroom preset, I can bring up the toolbox menus by pressing one of the D-pad keys. There are four separate menus, one in each key. And this is how it was set up by default, but obviously you can change it. And as you can see, the menu pops up. And at this point, I don't even need to use my mouse. I actually don't even need to see what's going on on the right side of my screen. I can just keep my eyes on the image because I don't have to move the slider with my mouse. I rotate the center knob to move the slider left and right. And if I want to move on to the next one, I just use the scroll wheel to toggle up and down and then use the knob again to make the adjustments. And this can not only potentially save so much time, but also using this knob instead of the mouse and keyboard is so much fun and more accurate. So after using the tour box for almost two months, is there anything I don't like about it? Well, I can think of a few minor things. First, I wish the power switch was at the back instead of at the bottom so I can just turn it on and off without having to lift the whole thing because like I said, the top is very smooth and slippery and this is kind of heavy so it's not very easy to lift it. Second, I love the haptic feedback feature on the Elite model, but it can get a bit noisy in a quiet environment, especially in a shared office. Thankfully, the feedback is adjustable in the software and you can also disable it, but I wish there was just one more setting between off and low, so it's a bit quieter, but you still feel the clicks. And this isn't something that necessarily bothered me, but I've heard some other reviewers mention it. The button combinations that you can program aren't necessarily infinite. You can only program two button combos that the console software allows. And currently, you can't program any three button combos. I personally don't use all the possible button combinations slots available, so this isn't really a deal breaker for me. But a lot of people might, and it would be nice to be able to program your own combinations in addition to what the software allows. But overall, I've been really enjoying using this thing and I've been using this to edit all of my videos in the past two months and I'll probably start using this for 
all of my future videos as well. Not just because it can help me work faster, but it's just been really fun editing with this thing. And also very importantly, the console software is really well designed and even today they're still adding more features and fixing bugs. So if you're interested in trying one out or learning more about Torbox, I'll put the product link in the description and always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions for me and thank you always for watching and I'll see you in the next video.